My name is Maria Jose Rodriguez and I work at Centrico Digital as a design expert. And we are creating the series of videos so that we can talk about the different web design trends that we see that are strong for this year. We'll be talking about 2D illustration, animation, and 3D graphics in three different videos. This is the first one of the session. So as I said, today we will be talking about illustration, specifically illustration, and we'll be talking about why it's so good, why it's such a hot trend for this year, and it actually has been since, you know, probably 2014. And we'll see a couple of examples of illustration, types of illustrations that you can use to make your website stand out. We get a lot of questions from B2B and B2C customers asking us what they can do to make their website stand out from the competition, and illustration is one of those um, answers to that question. And then at the end, we will also talk about what you can do to make sure that you have a great illustration project and that you get everything right. So first of all, let's go over why illustration works. Illustration is wonderful because it helps you create a unifying style for your brand um, so that whenever people see one of your illustration works or um, one of the marketing assets that you might use with illustration in it, they'll recognize it instantly. Another reason why it's so important is because it makes it recognizable. Um, it's faster to read than text. And if you're used to seeing that sort of style or image in your website and all of your communications, then uh, your viewers and your customers will be able to recognize that without even necessarily having to see your logo at first. Uh, the other thing that makes illustration great is that it's unique and it's custom made. Um, so, you know, in normal websites, when you're launching a website, the first thing that you might think about um, is about having photos for your website. You might have to use stock photos, which are pretty generic and will make you look pretty much like everyone else. Plus, you run the risk of actually having someone else use the same stock photo for their website or their assets. Or you might decide, you know, to take pictures of your own. But uh, if you need something very specific to portray some certain ideas or examples of the work that you do, those might have to be staged photos. Um, and you might not necessarily find the right photo or the right setting to portray or communicate exactly the idea that you want to communicate. With illustration, you don't necessarily have that problem because with illustration, you are getting something that is custom made specifically for you and your company. And you can really have anything that you want to communicate and set it out specifically as you need it. Finally, the other important thing about illustration is that, you know, it's very narrative and emotional. It has a lot of storytelling elements to it. Um, that makes your websites be friendlier and just easier to navigate or for people to understand uh, what your you know either brand is about what your products are about what different product attributes they have um, or anything else that needs the sense of narration um, in fact a couple of studies show that people that you know rate websites and brands as friendlier whenever they do have illustration elements in their communication so now that we've seen you know why illustration is important and how it works let's talk about some of the different illustrations that you can use in your website to make it stand out so first of all you have the hero illustration which is that big image that you see you know in the top header or banner when you come in and it takes up most of the space of the website or web page um, this might not necessarily be in the home page. You can use it in different pages, but it's a main image. Supporting images, on the other hand, are smaller images that might support an idea that comes with the text. So you'll usually see them paired with text. Theme images refers to images, you know, that have a current theme. Um, so for example, in Doodle, all of their images of their newly done illustrated website have, uh, you know, the theme of productivity and scheduling and meetings because that is what their software is about. Finally, then you have mascots and characters. Um, and there are a couple of different examples. And mascots and characters can be either human or animals or animated object with, objects with human-like characteristics. And what they do is they help guide the viewer through the website or, you know, give them in, important or interesting facts of 
that's throughout the website or answered questions where they might need them. They don't necessarily have to be illustrated, but they just add a sense of having a guide through the, to take you through the website and through the process of using your product or ordering or whatever it is that you want them to, to look through. Um, then, you know, there's different uses for the illustrations that you might have because you might ask for a set of illustrations that works for your whole website, but you can use it in many different cases. So you can take those same illustrations and use them in your blog, uh, not only in like the general blog web page, but in the blog articles as you know the main um, headers or banners, or you can use them within the text. You can also use them throughout all of the marketing assets. So, you know, just because you got illustrations done for your website doesn't mean that you have to use them only for your website. We've seen companies like Oscar Health, uh, MailChimp, and other companies use the illustrations that they have on their website, on their social media, on ads, on digital uh, media, and other places. Uh, just make sure that you talk with the designers that you're working with, that whether that's a freelancer or a company, to make sure that you have the rights to use that illustration in those different ways. Um, you can also use illustration in internal communications to, you know, kind of give more strength to your brand and how people perceive it. Um, so as I was saying, since you have a lot of illustration made for your website, you might as well use it for other cases and internal communications is a great way to do that as well. And uh, one point that I want to touch upon is illustration lends itself to gamification and animation. Um, so having these smaller interactions throughout your website or apps um, where, you know, either characters pop up or little illustrations move. Um, and give a little bit more life. Today, we're not gonna be talking about animation and we're not gonna see any animation examples, but in the future, um, next week's video actually, will be all based in animation and we'll be able to look at some examples then. So now let's go fast into a couple of examples of animation, of illustrations and how they're used in different companies' websites. So first of all, we have MailChimp, which was one of the first companies to start using illustration on their website. Um, as you can see here, they actually have an illustration in their logo that is Freddy the Chimp. Um, and so I think their brand lends itself to be, uh, you know, whimsical and fun, and that's why they can use the illustration that they've chosen. So you see here on their uh, homepage, they have an illustration and really all throughout their website, they have different illustrations that don't necessarily talk about um, the text that they're using. Although here it does, you know, it talks about connection and it's got a bunch of connected items. Um, Another thing, you know, you don't necessarily just have to use it in a banner or in a header or right next to text. They also use it in their drop down menu as, you know, a, a simple picture that comes with all of the different options that you can link through and take you to different pages. And another example here is you will see smaller illustrations. So MailChimp really uses uh, a wide range of illustrations from small, large, hero, uh, supporting and different illustrations uh, to give their website a little bit more life um, and make it seem fun and entertaining. And I would say most of their illustrations um, have that purpose to kind of entertain and delight customers as they go through the website. You can also see here that they use their illustrations within their social media and they actually use them for their blog as well. And this is a perfect example of if you're getting a set of illustrations done, you might as well ask for different assets that you can use in different cases. Um, and they're not necessarily new illustrations. So for example, you'll see this illustration in their website with a different colored background, um, as well as the other ones. And they just have them in different styles and colors so that they can use them in many different cases. Another example that I was talking about before is Doodle. Doodle has uh, just revamped their website with a lot of illustration this year, and uh, they have a lot of interesting things going on. First, a very strong aesthetic and style that is recognizable. They also start making use of characters with the uh, penguins that, you know, appear in different parts of their websites and their illustration. 
Uh, they do a great job pairing images with text and, you know, to highlight the uses of their product, um, their different attributes and just, you know, make it easier for someone to understand. And so this way, when someone's looking for, through the website, they don't necessarily have to read everything to understand what the brand is about and what the t they're talking about. Uh, another thing that I think they do a great job at is they give their testimonials a little bit more life and a voice a human voice when they add the the portraits in illustrations um, so when you have testimonials you either just have the text um, and you know the quote that Kristen said or you have the image of the person as well but that might be a little bit difficult especially if you're doing testimonials of clients and you don't have a good picture of them um, or you can't arrange for them to take a good picture you know illustration solves this and you just have um, something that gives it a human voice without going through all the hassle of taking pictures of everyone or, or asking them for pictures. And this is just a summary so that you can see uh, a couple of images from Doodle where, you know, they have this character, the penguin, that is whimsical and fun uh, and really supports their brand by saying, you know, it's a young company, it's uh, different, you know, you're not doing scheduling and meetings the traditional way, but it's a little bit more fun and lighthearted. And then finally, I want to look at Oscar. This is Oscar Health, uh, an insurance company. And if you were thinking that illustration usually works best for services or software, um, you know, and that you might not be able to use it in other industries that aren't young or friendly or, you know, necessarily thought of as fun. Um, Oscar does a great way of showing how illustration can be used in a company that might be a little bit more serious usually. And so being a healthcare company, um, you know, when people are looking for healthcare insurance, uh, it's not necessarily the most fun thing to do. It can be confusing, um, boring as well. And here you can see that Oscar Health really just, you know, makes the website a little bit more fun and friendly and makes healthcare more accessible by doing that. It de demystifies, you know, all the things that you might think about healthcare and makes it easy for people to approach it. And then, as you can see, they use it not only in their banners, they use it as icons for different sections. Um, they have it as pop-ups, they use their illustration. And what's really fun about them is that, you know, because illustration allows you to be flexible in the type of images that you can portray and uh, there's really no limit to what you can do. Um, you know, you can do images like this where you have the skeleton, whereas in if you were doing photography, it might be a little bit difficult or weirder or there might even be, um, I don't know, some le legal issues with having somebody's images of, you know, of healthcare items that belong to a person. Um, so I think with illustration, you can go through those barriers and really, you know, demystify an industry that is ten tends to be a little bit more serious. With Oscar, you also see that they use their illustration in social media and they actually go even beyond that. So they ran a campaign in New York where they had some of their print ads in the subway uh, with their illustration campaigns. Um, so it's a it, it really helps them stand out in the industry of healthcare. Um, as there aren't many companies that dare to have illustrations. So with that, now let's talk about how do you get an illustration project right? First of all, you need to know your brand. So, and I know you will probably say, yes, of course, I know my brand, uh, but you need to know it very well, especially the person that's going to be in charge of the project. Um, you need to understand its voice, its characteristics, you know, certain things that are or aren't allowed um, and really understand it to, first of all, decide if you actually can use or should use illustration, and then to decide what type of illustration you wanna use and when you wanna use it. Then you have to make sure that you have the skills. Um, you can have these skills in-house, you might have a design team, uh, but also you're probably gonna need either a brand director, uh, an art director or a brand manager, because they're gonna be in charge of supervising the whole project and actually driving it in the direction that makes sense for our brand. Then with uh, the actual team that's going to design it, you might have a graphic design team in-house. You just have to make sure that they actually have anim illustration skills uh, because it's very different to do other types of 
uh, graphic design than illustration. And if they can't do illustrations, then you probably need to hire an external team, whether that is a graphic designer that's a freelancer or an agency. Just make sure that they have worked on illustration projects before. Next, you want to understand the expectations and scope of the project. So you want to define, you know, um, if you're going to be doing illustrations for the whole website, um, if you're going to be doing them for the website, but they're also going to be applied um, in social media or in other areas, if you're going to need the same illustrations uh, for print. Um, it's also very important to decide if you want an illustration set that you can you know, have as open files to play around and create some assets on your own or with your in-house team or if you want very specific and punctual images that will, you will use on very specific cases. After that, you kind of want to start organizing your inspiration. And you can do this, you know, either whether it's your art director or brand manager that's doing this, or uh, with your agency. Um, if you don't have the time or if you're a little bit um, ambivalent about doing it yourself, um, what you want to do with your inspiration and start looking at what other brands are doing, what illustrators are doing, not necessarily in your industry, just in general. So you have an idea of the types of uh, aesthetics that you want to manage. I mean, you can decide that you want to do something that's very colorful or monochromatic or that's very detailed or realistic, or you might go, you know, very minimalistic um, and uh, maybe using one or two colors or warm colors or, you know, uh, cold colors. Um, this is something that you can do just simply going online and looking at some ideas and putting them together in a document to present to your design team. Um, or you can ask the design team, you know, to propose something and to look for some inspiration um, and present it to you so that you can pick. Uh, that way, once you have designed the style that you want to use for your company and for your illustrations, you're going to have to define the number of images and sizes that you need. Um, now you might be thinking, what if I decide that I want 50 images, but then throughout the project, we realize that we need 52. That's all right. That usually doesn't represent much of a problem for illustrators or designers. You're obviously going to have to incur a couple extra fees or something like that, depending on the arrangement that you have with your agency. Uh, but it's very important that you define it because it's very different to say like, yeah, I might just need a couple of illustrations, maybe 10, and then figure out that you need 75. You know, it's going to change the scope a lot. So once you define what images you want, you might as well put it in an Excel sheet. You design what needs to be um, portrayed and you can give very specific details like saying I need a teacher that is uh, a male teacher that is uh, teaching kids uh, outside in the playground. Or you might just give an idea to the designers and say, we are going to use this image in a paragraph that talks about, uh, you know, didactic learning outside. And, and then the designers can come up with an image by themselves that they think works for that. Either way you go. Once you have this document with all the images that you need set, you just hand it over to the designers and let them do their magic because they really do know what they're doing and they're probably going to come up with the best examples and the best ideas um, if you give them a little bit of freedom um, to go and do what they do. That is it for today. Thank you for watching our video. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below in the comment section or email us and we'll try to answer the questions that you might have as best as we can. Thank you and I'll see you next week.